so I have a 2080 Ti, which means we're going to tear it down. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here. And now in today's video, we're going to be tearing down and repasting my RTX 2080 Ti. It is an EVGA XC Ultra. It's actually a triple slot, but it only has two fans on it. This thing gets a little hot. I bought this thing used. It's been less than a year since it's been running, but the thermal paste just gets too hot. Um, it's fine when gaming is just benchmarks. I actually want to overclock this thing. I'm running a 360 watt BIOS on it from Gigabyte. So I ordered some more Cryonaut. I actually ran out not that long ago with my PCs. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to tear this apart. It's running in my system right now. It's been running for, I'd say, three minutes. And it's at 74C. It's way too hot in my opinion. 1890 megahertz. I want to try and get about 2000 core minimum on this thing. I just really want to see what I can pull off it. So let's tear this thing out of my rig. And then let's tear it down. Okay, so I'm actually on my phone right now. You see on my setup, 74 degrees. It's kind of where it's maxing out right now. It's running 80% fan speed, max settings. I'll actually even show you guys right now. I can quit. Okay. Um, and I'm going to kind of do this like vlog style and stuff. I haven't done that. Look, there's me. Anyways, this is my setup. Um, but you can see here's my afterburner setting. So I was running 1,000 on the mem. Core clock literally couldn't even be overclocked. It was that hot. So let's shut it down. And now I got to uh, kind of climb under the desk. Oh, as you can see, this thing does light up. It's pretty beautiful. Um, uh, I guess we gotta move everything. You know what? Once I actually am taking it out, I'll record again. All right, all right, here's the gaming PC. Let's take this off. Let's take the glass off. It's a little heavy. But you know, it's okay. Um, here it is. Here's actually my gaming PC. I have way too many Arctic fans. I'm a fanboy. Arctic, please sponsor me. But anyway, so I can already feel it's, or it's still hot. But let's take the power connectors off. And then let's just make sure that I don't have any displays hooked up. And so now what I need to do just a triple slot so I need to unscrew this one right here and then uh, let's see I got one these are actually thumb screws in this meshify case I love this case it's such a big case and it runs so good um it's really good yeah there's the 10900k you might be able to see it I, as you can see, I run an ITX board in a huge case. Don't judge. I need the memory over clocks. I need the one nanoseconds of latency. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the last screw I need to get out. Let me just unscrew it right now. I got the card out of the rig. Sad to use both hands, but... I got it out. Now let's use the overhead cam and let's tear this thing apart. Okay, so we're at my desk. I'm on the overhead camera. As you can see, there's the card. Um, here's what I have to uh, try to pipe my iFixit kit, not sponsored. So I have this other screwdriver that, that I don't think I'll need. Um, I just kind of use it because it's a little easier to get stuff out of my computer with it. I have obviously the crying knot, rubbing alcohol, and some paper towels. So... We're going to open up this. I will time lapse this. I'm not going to talk the whole time just because that would be boring. So here it is. I actually like to put the screws in this. I think it's helpful. And now let's put it in. Um, so I actually have like tried just to check. This whole back play actually needs to come off. So you can't just remove these four screws. You actually have to remove it all. So I'm going to time lapse this and let's start unscrewing the card.
I've gotten all the screws out except for the ones around the actual core right here and this one. Now, this is actually already broken when I got it, which is fun. It's just EGA. You don't, you let us go into the cards. Just don't keep, just remove this sticker. You know people don't like them. Alright, so I've gotten all the main screws out. Now I just actually have to get these screws out. I'm going to recommend that you don't unscrew them all like at the same time just kind of you know let them out a little bit at a time you don't want to have a bunch of pressure on one part of the die so i actually did remove that one and i'll just remove this one and i'm gonna remove this one typically it doesn't really matter i like to do an x pattern just to make sure equal distribution especially it's really important though when you are thermal pasting so i don't believe i actually need to rem oh i don't okay i feel it coming out um let's see are there any connectors yes is that the only thing that's holding it on because so i don't think i really need to get them out let's see no all right so here is the card. Let's see. Can I remove this connector? I believe I can. I can. All right. So I removed the connector. First of all, that die is pretty big, especially compared to my uh, 1070 that I had. Um, I like how this has like a backplate and stuff. There's a little bit of stuff on the thermal pads. So it shouldn't be a big deal. This definitely does look like someone has repasted this card before. I can't see what thermal... I can't tell what thermal paste it, what it is. But, you know, we'll figure that one out a little later. So, I need to grab the paper towels. I like to always, like, before I use the uh, rubbing alcohol, just, you know, get as much off with the uh, paper towels you can it makes it a little easier so as you can see a lot of that came off I mean it's barely like still you know it's not dried up but it's not amazing as I would say so I got that now let's go on to the actual die Let's see, is there dust? No. Yeah, this card was definitely clean before. Which is good. I don't want to do it. You know I'm going to grab a different paper towel now. Yeah, I think... It's definitely a lot more hard on the die, which is kind of surprising. Typically where the die is, it will like kind of make it a little more liquidy. So, you know, I just realized that this plate also does hide, I believe, all of the shunt resistors. Also, that just clinged on. Yes, that looks like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I don't know why I just, like... Okay. All right. So, got the rubbing alcohol. Now, let's just... Now, you don't really have to get more than just the actual dye surface itself. If you are trying to like liquid metal your card, then yes, you do need to. But for this, which is crying out, it's fine. Maybe if I do decide to go liquid metal at some point, um, I probably will um, clean off all the, well, I need to clean up all the capacitors. You know, I try to do a little bit. 
of it, like for example, right here. Yeah, there was a lot of thermal paste on this, which doesn't affect performance. Gamers Nexus did a video about that. It's just really annoying to clean up. It's the one thing about too much thermal paste. I think that's what people hate about it, is that the fact that they like have to spend time cleaning it up. It's not a huge deal. It's just inconvenient. Yeah, I used to do the same thing and put a bunch of thermal paste on. It's just, it gets slightly, it gets very annoying. Especially on GPU dies like this. CPUs is not that big of a deal. So I'm just cleaning it up and I think it should be good after this. Just going to get a little bit of this off. And as you can see, it's a very clean die. It's the T102. It's what 20 ATIs are now. Let's open up the cryonaut. They always make these so hard to open. Okay, I got it. I got this. So, um, I don't really know how much to put. I'm going to say the whole tube. I'm kidding. I can tell whatever was used was definitely not crying out though. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let me find wherever I put. Oh, there it is. There's the cap. Um, let's see. Does it have a spreader in here? Cause so I probably will use that. Oh, it has one for the actual. Sometimes I just like to do this. You don't have to get perfect contact with this, like fully surrounded. You just kind of have to get it around where you need it to be. Then you should be good. I actually do think I need a little bit more right here. Not a huge amount. Maybe I will put more than I expected. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna grab the cooler again. We're just gonna put this over there for a second. Now we are going to, yes, this is where it goes. We're gonna connect this. This is like the fans and the RGB. We need the RGB to get the 10 FPS difference. I'm kidding. All right, and now we are going to put the card back together. We have to line it up a little bit. All right. All right, and now we got it. Um, 
We're going to start with these screws. Don't screw them all in. Don't screw like the first one all in, definitely. So we just want to get it to actually bite down. Yeah, that one got in. I like just to do that for all of them, actually. Just because that will evenly distribute the thermal paste. Some people like to actually check the thermal paste. I don't. This is like liquid metal. You could do that and then recircle it. Okay, and now I actually do like to screw that one in. Now we'll screw this one in. And this one. All right. Now the card is completely repasted. Let's just make sure these are all tight. Definitely do not want little pressure on these cards. They'll get very hot. All right. So we're going to switch back to the time lapse. And I'm going to put this thing back together. <laughs> back together you can see it's all good and spin i did put in that connector i think i showed you guys that yeah right there now let's put in the gaming rig and see if it lowered the temps it's officially time to put this thing in here i hope it's a little easier um let's see oops the aio um tubes are a little tall let's see can i raise them up i think i can i mean i know it fits obviously ten out of ten camera operations right now let's see you know what um, let's see, can you guys see if I put it like right? Oh, I got my eye fix it. Yeah, I fix it for the win. All right. It's in. Let's screw it in. The 20 ATI is back in my rig. It's running heaven right now. I ran a little bit earlier. One thing I noticed is that it actually was taking a little bit longer to actually get to those temperatures. Definitely this card. It has an okay cooler. I think if you're running this thing stock, it'd be fine. It's averaging so instantly. It's not going terribly. I actually did try about 2,000 2, megahertz core clock, and that worked pretty good, which is a lot better than what it was earlier. Um, I'm very excited actually to see. So I'm running about 310 watts right now. The original BIOS for this card is a 320 watt. I am running the 360 by gigabyte. I don't think this card could run a 2,000 watt 1.1. 125 volt kingpin bios that's also available for this card but i think that it could 
if there was a better cooler. That could something definitely that I'm will look I might look into later. But right now, obviously this is fine. This is literally max settings. The only thing really we could do is like let's up let's see, is there? There's t there's fourteen forty P. Let's try and let's try fourteen forty P. And just see what happens. So we're gonna close it. Obviously the FPS does drop. Um temps actually aren't doing terrible. I don't I think it's stuttering so I was trying to get used to it. Obviously I don't really know about my overclock right now on my thousand megahertz. I gotta retest it. It was working fine earlier. We don't know. Um yeah, three hundred and ten watts. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitch. Follow me on TikTok. I might actually post time lapse of me tearing down the card on there. But I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.